This is KGW News at Sunrise. Well, another round of snow has come to parts of the metro area. Look at that. That's the scene in Hillsborough just after midnight. You see those big fat flakes coming down. Looking live right now on the left is uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square. And on the right, I-5 at Marine Drive. The road's looking you know, clear but wet right now. And more snow could be on the way over the next 24 hours. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday morning. I'm here along with Rod Hill this morning to fill us in on what to expect yeah. today. Huh? So, you know, we, we knew snow would be coming overnight. Most areas have at least seen snow in the air at times, but we have been fortunate in terms of travel. The temperatures have generally been between about 34 and 38 degrees. And it looks like that's probably where we're going to hold. So assuming that's the case, as Tim just mentioned, those wet roadways will continue to be well simply wet. Here's radar right now. The green is rain. Everything else is snow. Then you can see right now currently it's more rain than anything from Salem all the way up into parts of uh, Washington County. I live up in the Hazeldale area of Clark County. I have a fresh light dusting of snow in the grass. Had a little bit of slush on the roads when I drove in this morning around uh, 3.30 or so. Here's a look at a closer uh, radar. I have seen reports mostly in the higher hill elevations of an inch to as much as two inches of snow when you get up in the Cascade foothills of Clark County. But so far, and I think it's going to continue to be the story, we're staying above freezing and we're going to get through this with just wet roadways. Um, I-5 just wet this morning. PDX has been down to 36, now up to 38 degrees. The cold front has passed, and this is kind of a strange deal where the air was actually colder before the front came in. Now the front's come in, and we're getting more of a turn to the west, and that's actually a warming wind, southwest winds at 15. As you look at current numbers, uh, I do believe we will all see a high of at least 40 this afternoon. Happy Valley at 1,000 feet 33, out in Hillsburg, it's 34, Forest Grove, 33. So certainly some areas are cold enough that there probably are dustings of snow falling. The precipitation rates we thought might get a little heavier as the front came in in the last hour or so. That really has not happened. It's been all light precipitation, which is one reason why the temperatures have been able to hold above freezing. 38 right now, 40 at noon. 40 at 5 p.m. Models uh, do turn us a bit more unstable this afternoon. That could bring a rain shower or a snow shower or even a little bit of an icy mix at times, but temps will be above freezing. Tim? All right, we'll take that, Rod. Thanks a lot. Well, Governor Tina Kotak has declared a state of emergency in Multnomah County because of the conditions outside. It will remain in effect for one week and allows for the county to get state resources to help local crews. The city of Portland had eight warming shelters opened overnight and they're getting used. City leaders say 800 people stayed in a shelter somewhere in Portland Friday going into Saturday. Now, TriMet has also canceled several bus routes this morning, so check your transit tracker before heading outside for a ride with TriMet. Well, it seems like every time there's significant snowfall, traffic comes to a standstill. People leave their cars behind and that creates even more problems. Cars get towed and drivers are left to pay hundreds of dollars in fees. But this story may surprise you. Art Edwards talked with a woman who couldn't believe what it cost her to get her car back. Victoria Sharan tried to make the drive from Beaverton to her Portland home on Wednesday. What she encountered was a mess. Standstill traffic on 26. This is the view from an ODOT camera. She only managed to travel a mile in five hours. She made the decision to pull off the highway, leave her car, and walk to a safe place. And I made sure I pulled over. I was in between two other cars, and I was able to see the white line on the freeway. But ODOT tagged her car as a hazard. When she went back to get it on Friday, it had been towed by Anderson Towing. After watching the story on KGW, she figured it would cost $270 to get it back. When we got there, um, the charge was $787, and I was devastated. <laughs> Sharan says in the future, she would make a different decision about even driving in the snow. When I was stuck in traffic for five hours and not moving, I, I felt like I was <laughs> going to die. <laughs> it was so scary, and I think in the future, I would, I would not risk it. You got a feel for her. Victoria says she will try to contest the charges. We did reach out to Anderson Towing. We were told that there wouldn't be anybody available until Monday to talk with us. ODOT says cars deemed a hazard will be towed. An ODOT spokesman says a typical tow should cost about $250 for a car, truck, or SUV. 
Well, that's not the only issue drivers are facing. Alma McCarty has the story of one man surprised to find his car vandalized after he got stuck Wednesday night. Roads like I-205 are looking a lot better on Saturday than they did earlier this week. I spoke with a man named Joshua, who was one of the many stranded on the road for a long time, Wednesday into Thursday. He said he spent more than 17 hours in his car and ultimately decided to abandon it on the side of the road. An arborist on his commute home from Aloha, Joshua found himself caught in a mess. Because there were buses and semis and cars just piled up on, on top of each other. So that ended up turning into like a 12 hour just parking lot. He eventually made it to 84 and then 205. I got stuck there. That was like another couple five hours or something. I just kind of gave up, you know, and I parked my car on the side of the road and started to walk. He made it back to his home in southeast Portland, only to return to his car on Friday broken into and vandalized. They had broken out that window and then went under the hood and they tried to steal the car but that didn't work so they um, tried to steal the battery and the computer that didn't work so they tried to rip out the fuses and the relays and they tried to take the whole thing and so they ripped out my wiring harness and so they, they couldn't get that out so then they stole everything and then they just took an axe to like the whole entire engine bay and then into the interior of the car. Joshua says the axe and the other work gear in the back seat was gone. Glass covered the inside, the front bumper and hood were broken, and the car wouldn't turn on. Overall, a discouraging situation. I've thought it over a million times, like should I have moved the car somewhere else, but there was really no place to move it. Everywhere, everybody was stuck. Then Friday night, a friend with a truck stepped in to help. 24 or 48 hours later, now just getting the car home. Thanks to my buddy. Came all the way from Corbell to help me. He was very nice and, and tied it up and we towed it all the way home. So that was awesome. That was like a victory. At this time, PPB has limited information about possible car prowls or vandalism post snowstorm, but says these incidents are often reported later on, given the staffing and delays in response times for non emergency calls. Joshua doubts he's the only victim. I'm positive that there were other cars that this happened to, and I, I've had seen several other cars with their windows broke out or their wheels gone. I'm sure it happened to several other people. It wasn't just me. In Portland, Alma McCarty, KGW News. And we will continue to update you on the latest weather news on air and, of course, online as well. Just download the KGW News app. Turning to our homeless crisis now, Governor Tina Kotek is creating coordination groups to address homelessness in certain areas of the state. On her first day in office, Kotek declared a homelessness state of emergency for regions where homelessness has increased by 50 percent or more from 2017 to 2022. That's areas such as the metro region, central Oregon and the Willamette Valley. She's now creating multi-agency coordinating groups to target those emergency areas. The goal is to prevent more than 8,000 households from becoming homeless at 600 shelter beds and get at least 1,200 people off the streets all by January 2024. However, this work depends on the state legislature passing the governor's proposed investment packages. And now to our housing crisis. Seniors at a low-income housing complex in Tigard are facing rent increases. Many of them worry those increases could force them into homelessness, and they're trying everything they can, including speaking up. Blair Best explains why what was stable for decades is now on shaky ground. The strength of community. I want to stay there for the rest of my life. Was on display at Tuesday's Board of Commissioners meeting in Washington County. I have friends in Wood Spring and I don't want to have to move. A plea from low income tenants in Tigard as they face rent hikes they simply can't afford. We don't want to have to choose between getting a prescription and paying our rent. Tucked off of a busy highway is Wood Spring Apartments. For 30 years, it's been mandated as affordable housing by the county for people like Lois Keck, who makes less than 60% of the area median income. I've lived here 20 years. I consider it to be my forever home. 
About two years ago, the tenants were told those affordability restrictions would expire in three years, meaning rents would be raised to market rate, which is about $1,800 a month. Currently, they're paying about 1000 We all were um, under the assumption it would go on forever. Nobody said at 30 years it was over. After these seniors learned they'd be facing rent increases, they formed the Woodspring Tenant Association to try and save their homes. Right now, I don't have anywhere else to go. It's my home. My neighbors are my family. Thank you for your comments. I want you to know you've been heard. The county will give the tenants $3,000 to move or put towards rent. They have about 10 more months to decide. Why in the world are they sending us out on the street when they've got property that can for a fraction of the money keep us housed? KGW reached out to the Woodspring Apartments management team and is still waiting for a response. It's like they've forgotten us and that we don't matter. And so I, I, I just want to matter. Many argue that what's happening to the tenants here at Woodspring Apartments is just a sign of what's to come for other apartment complexes in the region facing similar rent hikes. In Tigard, Blair Best, KGW News. Now, still to come on Sunrise, new research that could save dogs. Some dogs are predisposed to deadly bleeding problems after surgery. Teams at Washington State University created a way that owners can test their pet to see if they're at risk. And did you know you can watch Sunrise anytime you want on KGW Plus? In fact, all of our news is on Roku and Amazon Fire. Just look for KGW and add us to your home screen, please. And stream Sunrise on your schedule. We'll be right back.